There are several ways to arrange objects on a circular path. We will focus on three of them, and when and why we should use one over another. The first method that we will use, combines two different modifiers. Array and curve. Create a circle, for your object array to follow. Let's say we want to create a watch. Add an array with a count value of 12. Then add a curve modifier, and pick the circle as the object. The problem in this case, is that this method is not too precise, and it also bends the object. It is useful in other cases that we will see a bit later. To make it more obvious, I reduced the number in the array, and also scaled up the object. As you can see the object is stretched. You can also place items manually on a circular path. Just create a circle, with the number of sides equal to the number of item copies that you want. This method is useful, if you want to put different objects, or objects with different rotations on each step. Make sure you place the circle, where you need your object to be. Change the snapping to vertex, and the target to center. Then activate snapping. Duplicate the object by pressing Shift D, and move the cursor over the vertex where you want to place the object, then press left mouse button. Repeat the process for each copy. The next method, is probably the most suited for this situation, since it is precise, and it doesn't bend or deform the original object in any way. It is also non-destructive, meaning that we can come back later, and change the number of copies, or the angle between them by just changing a few values. Place the object where you want the first step of the circular array. Then we need to change the origin, so it rotates around the center of the watch, instead of rotating on itself. The fastest way to do this, is to apply all transformations. If you want more information on how apply transformations work, you can check my tutorial on that topic. Now add an array modifier, with a count value of 12. And deactivate relative offset, since we will use another object, to determine the angle separating each copy. In this case we will use an empty. Now go back to the array modifier of your original object and add the empty as the offset object. The only thing we need to do now, is to rotate the empty on Z axis, the same number of degrees that we want between each of our copies.
Now I want to show you two examples, to explain a bit better when each method can be more useful over the other. On the watch exercise, we saw that the array with the offset object method was better. Because the object shape was not affected, and the location of each copy was precise. Now I will show you one case, where the method with the curve modifier is better. Since this method bends the object, it is useful on continuous shapes, like this example. On the last example, I will show you a case, using both methods combined to create the main part of a water well. I hope you liked this tutorial, and learned something new with it. Remember to support my work if you find it useful, with a like, comment or subscribing to my channel. It will help me dedicate more time to create more and better content. Thanks for watching.